For many years, soybean, corn, wheat farmers, we weren't using a lot of fungicides. But you know what? In the last 10 years, the amount of fungicide use has gone up just dramatically. Today, we want to talk a little about corn and when you can get the best response and when not to spray a fungicide. Well, okay, let's look at corn. When corn was $1.30 a bushel and fungicides are close to $20 an acre, the only people using fungicides were the guys doing seed corn production because yep. they're the only ones who had enough gross dollars per acre to justify that expense. When we think about regular field corn or commercial corn, wow, we couldn't do it. Then all of a sudden, corn ran up to four, five, six, seven dollars a bushel, and we started thinking, wow, these fungicides have come down in price, the corn has gone way up in price, and now it only takes just a little bit of gain, and we can justify doing it. So people got interested in looking at fungicide on corn, whether it's an early season application or a tasseling time application, or some of the real high yielding guys doing some applications in between. Now we've got corn prices settling back down a little bit, and we've got fungicide prices starting to come down a little bit as well. It's important that we look at the return on investment and the possible gains that we could have by putting on that fungicide application early in the season. That's exactly where I wanted to go is return on investment because when we talk about things not to do on the farm, here's what not to do. Don't do things that don't make you money. Okay, so if we're talking, let's let's figure on the low side. Let's figure three dollar corn. Okay, you should hopefully be able to get more than three dollars for your new crop corn, but let's just figure three dollars. Okay, so if we look at a cost of let's say seven dollars for a low rate of a fungicide ideally what we're looking for is we want to be able to double our money so you can throw the fungicide in with most post emerge products you're going to spray on the corn so you don't have an extra trip or anything like that you just throw the fungicide in so if let's say it was seven dollars for cost well now ideally we'd like to get 14 to 20 dollars back somewhere in that kind of range to get that what we're talking about with three dollar corn is five to seven bushels all right, so that's what we're shooting for here. And you can look at all the data in the world, but until you actually do some stuff on your farm, you're probably not gonna actually prove it to yourself. So we suggest doing some strip trials, try some different things, and try it on different varieties on your farm, and maybe even try some different fungicides. If you're talking the full rate of fungicides, some of these products might cost $15 to $18 an acre. But the thing is, when we're dealing with small plants, then a lot of times we're using reduced rates of fungicides. So if, let's just say, for example, and you can certainly go out there and use the full rate, and we suggest that if you're in a heavy disease area and you want longer residual. But for some of these guys that are doing a half rate of fungicide that only costs five to seven dollars well that's fine but at the end of the day we got to get that economic return so if we're going to double our money we got to get five to seven bushels back if you're going to go out with a full rate then you're probably looking at hey i got to get 10 to 15 bushels it all depends on what rate you're using and what you're paying in the end for that fungicide well honestly that really works out when we're in areas of the country where we get more moisture and we have higher yield potential hey you know what you can probably justify that higher expense of a full rate fungicide when we're talking about lower producing areas drier areas areas of the country, uh, especially as you come west, a lot of those guys are using a half rate of fungicide, they don't have much disease pressure, and they're getting that economic return. The question is, when do we do this early season application? What you'll hear from any of the chemical manufacturers is they'll say, well, you want to be out somewhere between V4 and V7. Now that may not sound like this wide window of application, but believe me, if you look at a V4 corn plant and then you look at a V7 corn plant, there's a huge difference in growth there. When I'm looking at these types of plants and what we're going to target for our farm and when we're doing this type of application is we'd like to be towards the later end of that spectrum. We would ideally like to be in the V6 to V7 window. The longer you can wait with that early season application, the better off you're going to be, the better chance you're going to have of getting yield gains. That's assuming that you don't have early season disease pressure you've got to fight. We also get the question, well, which product should I use? And I'll say this, I care more about what the corn price is, I care more about the susceptibility of the hybrid, and I care more about the timing. So we'd like to spray a little bit later that V6 or V7 as opposed to V4 or V5. Now that's not to say that fungicide choice isn't important. We're typically now, as the, many of the companies are, talking about dual mode of action products, whether it's Fortix or Periaxor or Quilt or Stratego Yield or something like that, Quilt Excel, I should say, there are a number of different products out there. Try them on your own farm, but I would say we've had some success with all of those things, but we haven't had this home run success where I can say for sure every year we're going to spray every single acre. Try some things on your farm, see what pays off for you. I've talked to so many guys across the country that say, wow, my neighbor's getting a 10 bushel boost and I got three. What's the difference? How come he got a better gain than I did? Is it the hybrid? Is it the field? What's going on? We're right across the fence. And many times the first question that I will ask 
ask is, well, what did you use for spray nozzles? And how are you getting that product out yep. there? And if a farmer says, well, I'm using seven gallons of water, I'm using my same nozzles that I'm spraying my Roundup with, I'm just throwing it in with Roundup, so I've got great big droplets, and you know, well, what's your neighbor use? Oh, well, he used flat fans and he used 15 gallons of water. Guess what? He got a lot better coverage with that fungicide. With any of these fungicide products that we're talking about, you have to spray them out there before there's disease. They're preventative products, not curative products. They aren't going to solve a disease problem. The other thing is they can only protect leaf tissue that they cover. The other thing is this spray coverage is just huge because let's just say you only cover about half a leaf. You cover the outside half of the leaf, but not the half of the leaf that's closest to the stalk. Guess what? Fungicides only move out on leaves. They don't move back towards the plant because they move in the xylem system of the plant that just moves out and up, not the phloem system that moves both ways. Chances are you'll probably see right to a line that disease starts on the part of the leaf you didn't get covered. Well, again, we do like fungicides relatively early in the growing season in corn. We would suggest you try some different fungicides out, try to get the right spray timing, the right nozzle selection, and definitely you want to take a hard look at spraying at the V6, V7 stage instead of V4, V5. That's where you've seen a little bit better result. Well, one other thing you want to get a great result on is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 